oh boy, it's an Agape Astrid 7-string prototype guitar. Okay, here we go. We got ourselves a walnut body, a quilted maple top with the burn burst oil finish, and a really cool Macassar ebony fretboard. And, well, the interesting thing is that this guitar actually has a raw finish, which means that it's not filled with epoxy, so the top is really, like, you can actually feel the wood. We have ourselves a 7-piece walnut, mahogany, and flame maple neck, which is tapered really well and is super comfortable and feels very solid. We also have ourselves some hip shot bridge and locking tuners right here. I love these. These look really, really badass. We also have some more of this raw tone finish on top of the headstock. And you can see it's not a veneer. It's actually still quite thick. Finally, these ferrules are very nicely drilled in. You can see it's quite a clean job. And the back plate for the electronics cavity is actually quilted maple as well. Finally, some bare knuckle pickups and that golden, awesome looking hip shot bridge make for a really beautiful aesthetic on this guitar. So now that we've run over the specs of this guitar, let's talk a little bit about it. Obviously the wood is very, very naturally done here and it's got this kind of rawness to it, which is very interesting. Apparently this was done with a blowtorch as well. And a lot of guitar enthusiasts would be like, why are you, why are you doing that? But obviously it's to create an aesthetic, which Mr. Rich Chaffins, the owner of Agape Guitars, is hoping to create. So overall, what do I think of the guitar and its appointments? I think that the hardware itself is fantastic. The overall raw finish of it is very, very exciting and very cool. So without me complaining about the black bobbins, which I don't always love to see, I have black bobbins on a couple of guitars. It's stale for me now, right? Do know that this is a prototype guitar, so there are some things which are a little bit more rough around the edges. But for now, let's hear a heavy rhythm sound and let's take this down a notch. <laughs> Now this guitar does glow in the dark and that sounds like a strange thing to say, but really it does. These little dots here, which are underneath the control switch here, the toggle switch and the volume here, this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this, they all glow in the dark, which is really rad. This guitar was made with a really interesting concept and I actually do quite enjoy playing it. The only couple of things that I have noticed is the fret access to the 24th fret is in kind of impossible for me to reach. And I have quite large and long fingers. So the only way I'd be able to do it is actually my pinky kind of goes against this cut here and then my ring finger is able to reach the 24th fret. Now that kind of fret axis is not desirable, but again, this is a prototype guitar. He's still refining things and I do quite like this guitar despite this fact. I don't always go up to the 24th fret. The only other chief complaint I have is that it appears that the bridge is a little bit off axis and you can see that it's cut a bit towards this way. Like the angle of the bridge is supposed to be just a bit more straightened up. But then again, it's a prototype guitar. Of course, it's gonna have some flaws here and there. And it actually still plays really well. And it still sounds really good. So I'm gonna be quiet. We're gonna go through the clean sounds with these Juggernaut 7 strings from Bare Knuckle Pickups. For me personally, I do prefer the neck pickup over the other two options, but you have a sampling. Decide for yourself. I think the neck pickup sounds the clearest and just very pristine. There's something really open about it and it isn't overly midi or overly bright. And juggernauts can sometimes, I mean, it, they have been accused of being kind of rigid in the way that they are not meant for what people want them to be meant for, I think. And in this regard, they sound quite good. And I think it's just because of the fact that this has got some maple on it, it's a really, really, 
well thought out guitar in terms of wood selections, I, I'd like to say that. I think that's a good point to make. Now just before we get into the lead setting, I wanted to let you guys know, those of you who have an XFX2, right now I'm using a Dumble preset in the XFX2, and man does it sound good. No effects, no nothing, but it sounds like it's being overdriven like a real amplifier. I love this stuff. So anyhow, we're going to go over to the lead channel now. Obviously, for a lead guitar sound, I'm going to have more gain, I'm going to have all the juice and all the goo and all the delay and reverb that I want. And this guitar works very well and performs quite well under those kinds of stresses. So let it be said, Mr. Rich Chaffins of Agape Guitars, dude, you can build a guitar, man. This thing sounds very, very ferocious, especially on the lead stuff. I do wish that this access was completely fully formed, and perhaps in a later version, as this is, again, a prototype version guitar, Hopefully in the later versions we can see some more fret axis stuff resolved. I was quite worried that, that this heel would actually be enormous, but it's not that, not that terrifying actually, surprisingly. I do have bigger hands, but it doesn't feel like it's getting in my way. It's just that this cutaway needs just a bit more of a di I don't know, I don't know. I don't build guitars, I play them, alright? So, some closing remarks. Other than this small bridge air here, and perhaps the tuning machine, the seventh tuning machine being a little bit crooked and things like that, which absolutely could have happened during shipping, to be honest with you. At least that part, not this part. Um, a prototype seven string guitar is hard to build. It's hard to make it well and, and make it good. And Rich has done a, quite a good job with this guitar, and I, I'm excited to see what else he comes up with. This kind of ingenuity here with these big, massive, cool, spherical things is not ugly. You know, and it's hard to make a guitar not ugly when it's your first couple of guitars. I think that it's a difficult thing to do. So, with all of that being said, I'm going to dim the lights and play some jazz. Mm -hmm. 